Hello. Um, welcome. It is Saturday. I'm in the back room where I have um, I have my piano. I do a bit of playing of music, and this is what I do. As ever, it's Saturday, so I've got a nice cup of tea. And I'm going to start with the glass eye. Hmm. I love tea. So the twits of the glass eye, which is there she is, Mrs. Twit. A beauty, as we talked about. But not a beauty, really, because she doesn't think good thoughts. So, the glass eye. You can play a lot of tricks with a glass eye because you can take it out and pop it back in again any time you like. You can bet your life Mrs. Twit knew all the tricks. One morning, she took out her eyeglass and dropped it into Mr. Twit's mug of beer when he wasn't looking. Mr. Twit sat there drinking his beer slowly. And the froth made a white ring on the hairs around his mouth. And he wiped the froth onto his sleeve and then wiped his sleeve on his trousers. I never do that. You're plotting something, Mrs. Twit said, keeping her back turned so he wouldn't see that she'd taken out her glass eye. Whenever you go all quiet like that, I know very well you're plotting something. Mrs. Twit was right. Mr. Twit was plotting away like mad. He was trying to think up a really nasty trick he could play on his wife that day. I'll show you a picture. There he is. Plotting while drinking his beer. You'd better be careful, Mrs. Twit said, because when I see you starting to plot, I watch you like a wombat. Oh, do shut up, you old hag, said Mr. Twit. And he went on drinking his beer, and his evil mind kept working away on the latest horrid trick he was going to play on the old woman. And suddenly, as Mr. Twit tipped the last drop of beer down his throat, he caught sight of Mrs. Twit's awful glass eye staring up at him. From the bottom of the mug, it made him jump. I told you I was watching you. Ha 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 ha, cackled Mrs. Twit. I've got eyes everywhere, so you'd better be careful. Next chapter, The Frog. <coughs> I need some tea. To pay her back for the glass eye in his beer, Mr. Twit decided he would put a frog in Mrs. Twit's bed, as you do. He caught a big one down by the pond and carried it back secretly in a box. That night, when Mrs. Twit was in the bathroom getting ready for bed, Mr. Twit slipped the frog between the sheets. Then he got into his own bed and waited for the fun to begin. Mrs. Twit came back, climbed into her bed and put out the light. She lay there in the dark, scratching her tummy. Her tummy was itching. Dirty old hags like her always have itching tummies. Then, all at once, she felt something cold and slimy crawling across her feet. She screamed. What's the matter with you? Mr. Twit said. Help! screamed Mrs. Twit bouncing about. There's something in my bed! I'll bet it's that giant skilly, <coughs> skilly wiggler I saw on the floor just now, Mr. Twit said. That what? screamed Mrs. Twit. I tried to kill it, but it got away, Mr. Twit said. It's got teeth like screwdrivers. <coughs> Help! screamed Mrs. Twit. Save me. It's all over my feet. It'll bite off your toes, said Mr. Twit. Mrs. Twit fainted. Mr. Twit got out of bed and fetched a jug of cold water. He poured it over Mrs. Twit's head to revive her. The frog crawled up from under the sheets to get near the water. It started jumping about on the pillow. Frogs love water. And this one was having a really good time. When Mrs. Twit came to, the frog had just jumped onto her face. This is not a nice thing to happen to anyone in bed at night. And she screamed again. I'll show you the picture while I'm laughing. 
I like this book, it does make me laugh. So there it is. Oh, go the right way. Frog, and then frog sitting on her head. Lovely. By golly, it is a giant skilly wiggler, Mr. Twit said. It'll bite off your nose. Mrs. Twit leapt out of bed and flew downstairs and spent the rest of the night on the sofa. The fog, the fog, the frog went to sleep on her pillow. Ah, oh, you see? Happy frog. And a nice little puddle. Oh. So, what happens, you see? When people are unkind to each other, they retaliate. They have a fight. If you do something nasty to me, I'll do something nasty to you. And that's very much how Mr. and Mrs. Twit were. And this next chapter is called The Wormy Spaghetti. The next day, to pay Mr. Twit back for the frog trick, Mrs. Twit sneaked out into the garden and dug up some worms. She chose big long ones and put them in a tin and carried the tin back to the house under her apron. At one o'clock, she cooked spaghetti for lunch and she mixed the worms in with the spaghetti, but only on her husband's plate. The worms didn't show because everything was covered with tomato sauce and then sprinkled with cheese. Hey, my spaghetti's moving, cried Mr. Twit, poking round it with a fork. It's a new kind, Mrs. Twit said, taking a mouthful from her own plate, which of course had no worms at all. It's called squiggly spaghetti. It's delicious. Eat it up while it's nice and hot. And Mr. Twit started eating, twisting the long tomato-coloured strings round his fork and shoveling them into his mouth. Soon there was tomato sauce all over his hairy chin. It's not as good as the ordinary kind, he said, talking with his mouth full. It's too squishy. I find it very tasty, Mrs. Twit said, and she was watching him from the other end of the table. It gave her a great pleasure to watch him eating worms. I find it rather bitter, Mr. Twit said. It's got a distinctly bitter flavour. And buy the other kind next time. And there he is, having eaten the whole lot, empty plate, and then he's wiping his mouth on the tablecloth. Not a nice thing. Mrs. Twit waited until Mr. Twit had eaten the whole plateful, and then she said, You want to know why your spaghetti was so squishy? Mr. Twit wiped the tomato sauce from his beard with the corner of the tablecloth. Why? he said. And why it had a nasty, bitter taste? Why? he said. Because it was worms! cried Mrs. Twit clapping her hands and stamping her feet on the floor and rocking with horrible laughter. There she is. And so, what do you do if somebody's just fed you spaghetti? You come up with your own trick to get them back. And that next chapter is called The Funny Walking Stick. And it's a brilliant chapter. I'm going to pause there, give my throat a rest, and I'll come back to that one tomorrow. Okay, take good care, you lot. I hope you're having a good weekend. Bye-bye.